Hey, welcome everybody to the second program of Roundabout Blues Time. And it's my honor to uh, have with me two, two friends uh, that I've been able to uh, play music with in various different uh, aggregations and for congregations too, for that matter. Over on piano, you'll find Mr. Kent Allen. He'll also be picking on some guitar in a little while. And, uh, hey, Kent, how you doing? Good, TJ. Is this good to be with this, this woman here in the middle? It's always good to play with Lily. Always good. Uh, our very, very special guest tonight, and we're featuring uh, Kent and Reverend Lillian Buckley. How you doing, Sissy? I'm doing great. All right. Thanks, thanks for having us. <laughs> thanks so much for both of you being here. And, you know, I just want to let anybody turn me around from having you two on tonight. How's that for a segue? All right. jamming here. This is uh, unrehearsed and we're old friends that have, uh, have had the privilege to uh, let this music not only entertain audiences, but uh, I feel, uh, I don't know, that it's uh, that we've uh, tried to uh, have it serve a greater purpose from time to time. Definitely not only being that it's uh, gospel music, which is always serving everybody and serving God, wouldn't you yeah. say? Very energizing. It, it's even someone who's not a fan of gospel music could feel something in that, I bet. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. definitely. And, um, well, let's see. We've been working with uh, the state holiday committee to make a Martin Luther King Day a holiday. We certainly did a lot, of, a lot of marching, and we, we certainly didn't turn around. And, and it did take a little while to, to, get, to get that holiday 
about uh, 20 years, so to speak. So yeah, 20 years too long, but oh, it yeah. came and it it's did. still here. So made me really realize uh, just uh, uh, how much it really takes to just what you would think would be such an easy thing for people to do mm -hmm. just you know honor this uh, not only the man Dr. King but uh, the, the spirit uh, when we honor Dr. King we honor the, the, the whole civil rights movement you know and uh, but it took like 20 years just to move one iota that, that simple thing you know I'm speaking of uh, uh, Dr. King, uh, how would you feel about uh, doing Precious Lord? Yeah, I would love to. One of his favorite hymns. One of his favorite hymns. Uh, written by the Reverend Thomas Dorsey, the father of gospel music. Precious Lord, take
said that was written by uh, Reverend Thomas Dorsey. Right. And wrote many, 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 many songs. Uh, a lot of people don't uh, know that Thomas Dorsey, uh, before he turned to uh, gospel, uh, also uh, played with Ma Rainey, Tampa Red, just uh, known as uh, Thomas, Tom Dorsey. Right? Yeah, barrel wrote, house piano and deep in, deep into the blues. He wrote that song after I believe he had heard about his his wife and child getting killed in a car accident. So there's such power. Such power. In knowing that the background story. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. and uh, supposedly uh, when when he uh, joined the the church, from what I understand, he took uh, the dynamics, especially the the soloist concept, mm -hmm. uh, the vocalist soloist with other people backing them up uh, and brought that over from the blues uh, and brought that, introduced that to the, the spirituals. Absolutely, yeah, he contemporized, contemporized the gospel. It. And then all of a sudden, gospel was born, yeah. and uh, which is, it's kind of uh, unique, and then uh, like a generation or so after that, uh, Ray Charles, of course, he was hearing the gospel, mm -hmm. and it seemed like the congregation and a lot of people forgot about that, that the blues had been an influence on, on the spirituals, yeah. because then Ray took the gospel back, back into the secular, and uh, it took actually just you know, uh, bona fide songs, note for note, yeah. and uh, and changed the lyrics, mm -hmm. and then rhythm and blues was born. Absolutely. And and then a lot of people were upset about that too. And know? then Edwin Hawkins took it with Oh Happy Day and made uh, gospel oh, yeah. accepted in secular circles. Once again, so, yeah. So yeah. It, it just keeps going, going back and forth, you know. And nothing new under the sun, TJ. Nothing new under the sun. <laughs> Chuck Berry said the same thing, as well as uh, Ecclesiastes. Yes, Ecclesiastics, <laughs> exactly. Hey, uh, well, let's see. Uh, how about how about a how about Peace Flag? That's sure. one of my favorite songs that, uh, that you've written. How long have you been uh, composing songs? Oh, boy. I'd say about maybe 15 years or more. I can't really remember. But this particular song I wrote for the Elliott Baha'i Peace Flag Raising Ceremony. I worked in Elliott at the time. Mm. And um, I wrote it especially for uh, their ceremony that they do every year. The Baha'is are uh, one Green of, Acre. Yeah, Green Acres. It's a place to be. Yeah. <laughs> Far okay. living. Yeah. yeah. And uh, in fact, <laughs> uh, a show, our next show, is going to be uh, dedicated to and about uh, B.J. Johnson. Oh. And he talks, uh, well, I'll let the audience have to wait on that, but he, he, he tells a very, very funny story about how he came to town okay. uh, under the promise of uh, getting a job. Uh, he came up from Louisiana mm -hmm. with the promise of getting a job at Green Acres. So anyhow, people that. will just have to wait to the next exciting They'll episode. They'll be on the of, edge of their seats. They will be. And uh, well, a little bit more about him uh, coming up in a little while too. But uh, let's do that song for the, the Baha'is and Peace Flag, Lillian Buckley. <laughs>
without bloodshed. There is a light rain falling softly in the morning, and the grass is growing so high and green. But somewhere Encourage people to watch the show. All right. Yeah. Uh, anyhow, uh, speaking of uh, raising the flag and being uh, proud of the movement and being activists and things like that, one of the, one of the things I really uh, appreciate about a lot of your rich, original material is that you're kind of. Uh, uh, as wonderful as the the gospel and, and the uh, anthems of the civil rights movement are and will always be, you're addressing uh, current issues of of, of the state of, of the civil rights movement. Mm -hmm. It's just like a, every Martin Luther King Day. It seems like a, everybody wants to know about what is the state of the movement, you know? And then as soon as Martin Luther King Day and maybe Black History Month is over, it seems like nobody's asking those questions. But mm -hmm. every time you sing, you, you bring those themes up and encourage uh, conversation about it. And I, I just don't think not 
only are people not singing about it enough, but people are definitely not talking about it. So I don't know. What uh, encouraged you to uh, write songs on, with those type of themes? Well, I, I guess I, as a practical kind of person, I, I, I've seen a practical need in society to help other people. For instance, um, Dr. King's birthday, we do food drive. Um, all year long, there are needs right around the corner from your house or my house. There are people who have needs, and um, and if nobody's talking about them, I think it's more palatable in a song to talk about, and people mm. are more willing and apt to listen. So I think I started. To, I I saw some wrongs and felt it. It's easier to hear if there's a cute melody, you know. Mm -hmm. And as a preacher, uh, it's. I do sermons every week. I wish I could just sing them all, you know, but uh, I do sing every now and then. But that's kind of why I, I, I started hearing melodies. Kent encouraged me to write, actually. I don't know if he even remembers, but um, he mm. encouraged me to write, and I just started writing, lyrics, started hearing tunes and, and getting words in my mind, just started having a tape recorder, back in those days a cassette recorder, sure. by my bed yeah. at all times. Mm. So it was a very practical need, that, um, an outlet for some frustration on my part, seeing practical needs not met. Uh, well, how about, uh, I don't know, one of those songs right now? Okay. Uh, don't Forget the Marching, maybe? Okay, Don't Forget the Marching. <laughs> Just call. 
Don't forget the marching band. Don't forget the marching yard. Don't forget the marching in Native Center. We many of those uh, lines and so many references that uh, sometimes I wonder and I'm looking out there uh, at school children that when I'm doing my, my workshops and and if I bring up even a name like Emmett Till so so often kids no matter what uh, the particular color of, of, or the race of, of the students are it's just like who? What? And uh, pl uh, plus, uh, when at, towards the end of the song, when you're talking about uh, uh, knowing your your origins, you know, it's uh, to me. I, I mean, uh, we talked a little bit. I just mentioned uh, Black History Month and and how uh, uh, Dr. King's holiday or Black History Month is over. So many of these issues are abandoned again, and then uh, and then brought out to, to parade around and, yeah. and and feel good about each other. And oh, and, and uh, oh well, our school did this, or our nonprofit organization did this, you know. But then then it goes back into uh, this comatose state of. Uh, Apathy uh, that nobody really wants to, once again, uh, move move the issues to the yeah. to to the next level, and uh, yeah, we forget to integrate it in. Like schools forget to integrate it into their year round. Uh, exactly. Uh, I mean, the meaning of it. Yeah. Right. And and now we we are also uh, faced. Uh, it, it seems like when things go around. Uh, uh, that uh, the way we think of history is that it's always like perpetually moving forward. It, you know, people may go, well, you know, it took a long time, but we're here now. We have arrived, and uh, that doesn't mean we don't have further to go, but mm -hmm. we, we're here, you know, or even, well, so we got a black president, so everything's got to be all right, right? Mm -hmm. You know, that is, unless you're wearing a hoodie and carrying a concealed bag of Skittles or something like that, you know. Uh, but it's, it, it seems like a, uh, that, that's not, uh, we, if we arrive, we, it's, it's going to take every uh, ounce of energy and knowing the origins and knowing the history of the movement and where things came from, uh, only that and perseverance uh, will and activism will keep it from sliding back. Yeah. And, and sometimes it only takes just basic civility in the in the in the line at, at a supermarket. I mean, it's not like you have to go marching every right. day, but just treating people with respect, and it's it's uh, not that hard to just do little things. To, to make a difference, I think, because you do regress. I mean, we can say we've arrived, but I don't think anybody ever arrives. Uh, you have to work at it. It's just like running a marathon and, and, and hoping you're going to make it with one week of jogging. You right. know, you got to do it every day, right, you TJ do it every and Kent? Day. Yep, <laughs> yep, yep. I like what you say, just the, uh, the everybody that you meet along your path. Yeah. You know, it's not always just the grandiose uh, uh, big, big things of change, mm -hmm. but so, you know, it's just like when you when you're skipping skipping that pebble across the lake, make making those that those little concentric pebble. circles. Yeah, and making reach those circles. beyond that pebble. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Hey, uh, how, well said. Oh. No. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, just uh, uh, now, uh, you two have done a lot of. Uh, not only performing together, but you guys have done a lot of uh, arrangements and, 
and things are working yeah. together collaboratively. Mm -hmm. How'd, how'd that come about? Uh? Well, actually, I was taking guitar lessons. I'm a wannabe guitar player. And Me with, too. With Kurt Definitely. now, I think you'd be on that. But um, Kurt Bissett. Um, yeah, Kurt. And I said to him, you know, Kurt, I want to start singing again, because I had stopped singing. I was only singing in the shower there for, at one point. And I said, I want to start singing again. I have any ideas? Because I'm not going to perfect my guitar soon enough. And he said, he gave me Kent's number, I believe, or told me to look you up. On. That's how it got started. Thank you, Kurt. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Kurt. Kurt makes a lot of good things happen. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> and for me, uh, to, 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 uh, to meet Lillian and to hear the melodies that she had written and the, um, you know, the, uh, the titles and the subject matter was just um, an amazing inspiration for me. Well, and it was a really a piano player's and a harmonizer's dream to just take the melodies that Lillian had and she just said, you know, go with it and see what's going to happen. So I just started putting chords to it and we just, you know, these songs just started emerging. They were all yeah. very, very funky and very, very cool. Very yeah. fun, fun, fun for me to play uh, time and time again. And you're so gifted so. at mm. arranging and hearing things. It's been, a, oh, yeah, it's been really a gift. Because somebody can have a melody and they can be singing and but there's so many chords that could be possibly uh, different variables mm -hmm. that could go on underneath yeah. each one of those melodic notes. Mm -hmm. I mean, your melodies are strong enough, so they're, they're very, very well, uh, the intention is there, the melodic yeah. attention, uh, intent is there, but still uh, finding, finding those uh, complementary chords, let, let alone the passing chords you use and things like that, man, it's like really, really amazing. Good, Lily good, has good a, a, a real nice gift of tact, too, because occasionally I'll come up with a change that just might be a little, a little not quite what she's looking for. She said, could we just try, try another one, try another change right there. Oh, so, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's always part of the process, yeah. definitely. And uh, uh, that, well, that's what in, in this show we're, we're also tr trying to do is uh, uh, trying to uh, uh, encourage people out there to uh, yeah, uh, learn from uh, great composers as yourself and arrangers like yourself, Kent, and uh, uh, be energized. And uh, hopefully every time folks will tune in, uh, the, the, uh, the talent that I'm, I'm bringing in here. This is just like, for me, it's uh, being like a, like a kid in a Willy Wonka's uh, chocolate factory, you know? Definitely, you know. Uh, well, let's have some more candy. Okay. Yeah. Uh, how, about, uh, how about some Mahalia? And what was, what was Mahalia to you? Oh, I heard Mahalia Jackson from my mother's uh, Zenith stereo, a Magnavox, actually, while I was crawling on the floor playing with my Fisher-Price toys. Um, my mother had her, James Cleveland, every, Clara Ward, everybody, uh, five blind boys from Alabama. Mm. But yeah, she uh, was my favorite just because of her dedication to gospel. She didn't float in any other musical waters, so I always admired that, that uh, deliberateness and that focus, and she's one of my heroes. Mine too. But I can't, I, I wish I could sing like her, yeah. so it's humbling to try to do one of her songs. It is, and I'm not just saying that. Oh, uh, I hear you. <laughs> yeah. Oh. oh, but can I tell you, when my father was a child in Charleston, Mississippi, he only wore shoes on Sunday, so this song kind of okay. has significance because when you get to heaven, you can wear shoes any day you want, and my father's in heaven with shoes on. Mm -hmm. All right. <laughs> Let's take a walk with those shoes. You got 
him singing in the choir yeah. at uh, People's Baptist Church. He was trying to be like Louis Armstrong, you know, putting down these, but he tried. He was cute, trying. <laughs> well, you, but come he from could a, sing. you come from a, some wonderful voices in your family. Yes, you know? we're gonna, yeah. Next time we come in, we're going to get your mom and, and, and brother in yes, here along with Kent, too. I look too, forward to and, that. Definitely. Some wonderful, wonderful sounds. Uh, you have another song that uh, you do for your father, too. Yeah, okay. Something's Wrong. Yeah. He used to tell me about his life as a, the son of a sharecropper in Charleston. <laughs> He said, 
Sissy, I wanted more for you. I really wanted more for you than I, I had. Than I, I had. My parents could not do for me what I have done, what I have done for you. Stop marching for freedom down those dark southern roads. Has the need ever really gone? Were we too quick to lighten our load? The signs are gone. They took them down. You can eat anywhere you like. But real justice still. Thank you. 
father and my father all of these days. Sure, that Christian band. Christian band. Gonna walk, gonna walk the milky white, white way. way one of these Guitar yourself, man. Sure. I'm gonna well, sit I just and can't walk too far because I'm all, I'm all hooked up here. You hook everybody else up. I'm so all it's hooked by up. By the time you got hooked Let's up, see too. what happens.
sweep it up, oh, up, it's free of charge. He'll stand by you when others fail to call. He's not a fair weather friend. He sticks closer than a brother. Keep it up, keep serving God. He will see you through. Keep it up, keep serving God, he'll see you through. Hey, amen. Amen. Thank you so much for coming out and blessing our, our audience and all of us being in just, uh, I'm just looking forward to uh, more, more of your songs. There's a lot of people out there that after seeing this show will want to get some music of yours. So uh, how would they uh, go about that? You have a wonderful, wonderful CD, which is, to me is one of the most uh, blends of gospel and traditional uh, along with this uh, new message for all of us that we need to hear. How would they go about getting that wonderful CD called Utterance, I believe? Yes, I have a website. It's uh, www.lillianbuckley.com and if they're interested, they can check it out. All right, you'll want to, you'll want to. Kent, thank you so much. A pleasure. And all y'all there, we'll see you next time when it gets to be around about blues time. <laughs>